This movie is produced by Michelle and Barack Obama. Going absolutely viral. Perhaps the Obamas and the world's elite know something that we don't know. It kind of feels that way, doesn't it? It's almost as though they were throwing out little hints. The first step is they hack into the power grid and then they just sit back and the people within eat themselves. They don't have to come in and attack. Correct. It's an act of war without having to drop one bomb or fire a single bullet. All any of us can really hope for is a heads up. Would you consider us preppers by any means? Um... When you've got the World Economic Forum saying that there is a high likelihood of some kind of catastrophic blackout event in the next two years, you should pay attention when the world's elites are all trying to preserve their lives by building these underground bunkers, you should pay attention. They were all kind of making fun of these billionaires. Well, when you have too much money, I guess, what do you do? Well, build a bunker. I don't care who you think you are. Yeah. The desperate times yeah. will, will bring about some very mm -hmm. desperate measures. Yeah. I mean, I know that sounds super conspiracy theory and everything, but the timeline is what the timeline is. And Watch this it. is just the stuff that we can confirm. What, mm -hmm. What's actually occurring that we, we, that we don't know about. behind closed yeah. doors. So when it comes to preps and taking the necessary precautions, you are crazy until you aren't crazy you're any crazy longer. You're crazy until you're brilliant. Uh, not <laughs> you're against it. Next At the same build. time. Yeah. Good simple living bunker build. <laughs> you're you're laughing. I'm not, I'm not laughing. I'm glad everybody will come away from this thinking that we're absolutely nuts now. Hey there, friends. Welcome back. Thanks so much for being here once again. Quick favor to ask before jumping into this episode of the podcast. Just like I explained to you last week, Melissa and I are really focused right now on trying to grow this channel really as far as we can. In the video podcast world, the number of subscribers that you have really counts for a lot. And so because of that, I want to ask a favor to all of you out there who watch on a regular basis, but maybe aren't subscribed as of yet. In diving into our channel analytics, we are finding that really only approximately 40% of you who do watch regularly are subscribed to the channel. So if you are not one of those 40%, uh, and you enjoy what we are doing here, I would ask that you please consider subscribing by hitting the icon down below. While you're there, you might as well also hit the notification bell to let you know whenever, whenever it is we are releasing new content. I really appreciate it. It helps us out in continuing to reach out to high quality guests for all of you out there. Um, it's not something that we do on the main channel, but kind of like I explained a second ago, it really matters in the podcast world with reaching out to guests in particular. So if you were so inclined and you were willing to help us out, we'd be forever indebted to you and we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. So without any further ado, let's jump into this episode of the podcast. Cheers, mama. Cheers. So what do you think? I mean, it was supposed to start out as just fun family night, you and I, the kids all snuggled up on the couch. And yep. then a couple hours later, you and I are having this in-depth discussion about whether or not we should be preparing for some kind of an apocalyptic event. Yeah. Well, I mean, after watching the movie that we selected on Netflix, we started wondering if perhaps uh, the Obamas and the world's elite don't know something that we don't know. It kind of feels that way, doesn't it? Sometimes, yeah. Well, I mean, I would think so. I would think if anyone knew, it would be them. So the movie that we watched together as a family is called what again? I think it's called Leave the World Behind. It's going absolutely viral on Netflix. Is it? Yeah, people are loving it. I think it attract. It has some big names. It has Kevin Bacon, which... Delicious. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> um, Julia Roberts, but this movie is no pretty woman. Mm, indeed, Melissa, no. indeed. It also stars Ethan Hawke. So mm -hmm. very uh, interesting premise. You want to touch upon how the movie goes? Not to make this a movie review, but yeah. again, it sparked some really interesting discussion between us because this movie is produced by Michelle and Barack Obama. Right, which I didn't realize, and that makes it so much creepier. And regardless of how you feel politically and where it is that you fall um, all along the political spectrum, I think anytime you have a U.S., a former U.S. president taking an interest in producing the, his own movie and apparently playing a, a relatively heavy and he was fairly involved is what I've seen and read. Yeah. It's it's interesting that that movie would center around such a, uh, essentially the the end of our country as we have come to know it. Well, he didn't write them. He didn't write like the script or wasn't really behind the writing of the script or Correct. the story. It was a book that they decided to turn into a movie. But then why would the Obamas be like, we want to attach ourselves to that story? What was so interesting about that story? And so the movie premise is essentially it takes place um, just outside of New York, Julia Roberts and her family are on a vacation and all of a sudden the power goes out. Well, They're like, on vacation. They're staying at like an Airbnb essentially. Yeah. So a private residence. Right. And the power goes out. So, and then at first they were like, oh, the internet's down. It just must be something like that. And then, uh, as the days go on, they start to discover like there's more to it than that. And 
So I don't want to give away like too many spoilers on the movie, but essentially it's about like a total catastrophic blackout scenario that is uh, nationwide. It's a cyber attack that mm-hmm. that causes all of this to occur. Right. And over time, they they especially like Ethan Hawke's character it struck me when he pointed out that, hey, I'm, I'm you know, a, whatever, 40, 50 year old man and I'm useless without my GPS or my cell phone. I thought that was a funny line, funny and comedic in the movie yeah. but when i really stopped to think about it as i you know i was like how many how many of us is that true for without our cell phones without the internet mm-hmm. nothing is up and functioning including ourselves nowadays and that's a scary thing to think about right well i think something like that like a total power out i mean people are like oh no it'd be fine because we lived without power for generations and centuries and yeah, that's our, not our, true of us anymore we're not wired that way I our mean, infrastructure so yeah would, would collapse. It would. I mean, everything from how our water is pumped to how our sewer is pumped. I mean, think about that. I mean, not our sewer, but yeah. Yeah. But most people, like if you live in a city or a suburb or anything like that, and you rely on any kind of city utilities and the power goes down for an extended period of time, eventually the backup generators don't work anymore. Now you've got sewer flowing into the waterways, into the streets, contaminating everything. So it's not like, oh, we'll just walk down to the stream and get a bucket of water. Maybe bigger issue though, and this is what occurs in the movie, again, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it and you're interested in watching it, is that it becomes essentially a, a dog eat dog type of situation quickly. to where, relatively quickly, yeah, to where uh, one of the main characters, his son, because there's a, a radiation exposure that occurs and they, they sort of piece together over time, that this is a coordinated event to where the, the cyber attack really was just step one and mm-hmm. they are very speculative in thinking that the goal of whoever it is that was responsible for the initial cyber attack is to set up this uh, collapse to where we are basically taking each other out from within. Yeah. Well, there's one line in the movie that, um, so basically there's these helicopters that are dropping like propaganda pamphlets, pamphlets yeah. saying like death to America or whatever in Arabic, in Chinese, in Korean, Korean, in pretty much anywhere where we've been Russian, anywhere where the U S has made enemies, there's these pamphlets falling and it, it, causes a lot of confusion but then one of the characters in the movie says well we've made a lot of enemies across the world and i felt like that was kind of a jab to like oh all these countries are going to come like coordinate together to attack the u.s or maybe it's just one country and they're just trying to add confusion correct they don't really answer that question in the movie i think that's what they were trying to allude to within the movie is that it was just more so intended to to cause speculative confusion amongst yeah. The populace. But it was causing like all the airplanes to crash. The boats were crashing. None of the GPS was working. None of the instruments on the commercial flights were working. And then to make like a little jab at Elon. Elon Musk. Yeah. And they <laughs> had all the Teslas, the self-driving cars, uh, basically like come to life like they were hacked. And then they went and drove without anyone in them and blocked all the exits. Of, yeah, that was a really road. interesting little portion of the movie because yeah. it was a very clear obvious i mean they, they went out of their way to make sure that every single car it was very visible tesla, that it tesla. said tesla in those big branded letters that tesla actually uses so they really hate him they it's which is interesting <laughs> because not that long ago that wasn't the case not yeah. to turn this into a political discussion by any means but you had those on the left who were very pro electric car electric vehicle mm-hmm. and it still remains the case but when it comes to him in particular ever since his acquisition of twitter they cannot stand him because of, uh, well, I mean, here's the way I view it is that he's, he's very pro freedom of speech right? and, uh, you know, he's, he's been very outspoken against censorship and that doesn't seem to be something that jives with that end of the political spectrum. Yeah. He kind of, um, went around them and blocked a lot of their censorship. Do you need to crack a window? I'm just saying, Melissa went ahead and loaded up our wood stove in here and I'm once again sweating because that's what I do. 70 degrees. Just crack the window. No, it's fine. You can keep going. Sorry. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, I just I thought it was an interesting thing for the Obamas to throw their weight behind. It was a very, very creepy movie. To me, the creepiest part of the whole movie is when they're sitting in the car in the end and are near the end. And he explains the three step program. And he's like, I, you know, I, this guy had worked in the government or something this like is that. Kevin Bacon's character, who was more of a prepper type. No, no, about? it was a guy that oh, worked in the government okay, yes, that correct. owned the house. Yeah. And he was like, so basically, like it, he explained why society breaks down and and like it was this whole three steps like the first step is they hack into the power grid and they take out the internet they take down the power to where it can't get put back up like Mm -hmm. it's blacked out lack of information 
Yep. Lack of information, lack of communication, infrastructure gets shut down. Yes. Yes. So basically they shut down the power grid and then they just sit back and the people within the nation eat themselves. So they don't have to do anything. They don't have to come in and attack right. because within three days, everyone's going crazy. That's, I mean, there's like this whole timeline for disaster that they've laid out, that the government has laid out or the World Economic Forum has laid out. Yeah, a lot Which of the powers really that be, uh, Klaus Schwab has has basically alluded to the same thing. Uh, very disturbing situation. If you're not familiar with Klaus Schwab, familiarize yourself with him. Yeah, ASAP would be my recommendation. So I was watching this whole like um, forum at the. It was a World Economic Forum, mm -hmm. and it was all of these leaders there. And I was listening to them talk, and they were just very casually like, "Yeah, the likelihood of a catastrophic blackout type situation is highly likely in the next two years." And I'm like, "Whoa." what <laughs> why is this not on the yeah. news why are like it's there the information's there like they put it on the internet but it's not on mainstream media people aren't hearing this but and we had the same type of thing that occurred prior to the COVID-19 pandemic yeah it, it's almost as though they were throwing out little hints mm -hmm. which is which is very interesting what do you think the reason behind that might be uh, I don't know I mean maybe they know that something's on the horizon maybe there's chatter and they do you don't think have that they're control? responsible for it? Like they're the ones who are actually implementing whatever reasoning or strategy may be behind doing such a thing on a, on a global level? I couldn't know. So possibly if, if that is the goal is to just totally gain control. But I would think that Americans in the American government, American billionaires, things like that may just not actually have control and maybe not. Maybe it is a threat from China. So a character within the movie um, who we never really get to see is somebody who is identified as being a very wealthy person and maybe has access to information or people who are in the know. Mm -hmm. And it basically indicated that, yeah, those who are very affluent, those who are well off, either are behind or have access to information about things that are upcoming. Yeah, but he also said that they have no control over Correct. it. Correct, but they had the ability to respond and get ahead of it. Yeah, and all, and then that was another creepy line in the movie. He was like, "All we, all any of us can really hope for is a heads up." Right. So it's like, whoa. <laughs> of course, like my like tin foil hat goes on, and I'm like, "Is that a warning? <laughs> like, are we supposed to?" <laughs> we already like talking about these kinds of things. I mean, prior to this movie, this is something that yeah, no, I, I love do in our free to time. talk about this. Stuff. We talk about all types of uh, hypothetical scenarios, and it's part of the reason that we are where we are, yeah. living the way that we live. Like, if you come to a bonfire and we're at it, and there's <laughs> beer, like we're probably going to talk about end Prepare of the world yourself. scenarios. <laughs> yeah, totally. I don't, do you? Would you consider us preppers by any means? Um, not, not that that's something you should ever put out if you are one. Yeah, and not in in the sense of the word that people think of when you watch like that stupid show like Doomsday Preppers and those people are like doing drills and they've got like stuff hidden in the woods, like not in that way. So I ask because I don't think there's anything wrong with being prepared and I don't, I don't understand why anybody would feel as though that there should be any ounce of shame uh, with identifying as, as being somebody who tries to prepare as much as possible, right? You want to limit your uh, reliance upon systems. Again, if the, if the if power goes down, if there's a grid down scenario, why not have some backup power? What's wrong with having some food stood away for yourself and your family? What's wrong with making sure that you have the ability to to protect yourself and your loved ones? I don't think there's any shame that should come along with that. Um, well, I we, think there used to be, but I don't think there is anymore. I mean, it is a billion dollar industry. It's a massive industry. We talked about how it seemed to have kind of skipped over somewhat our generation, mm -hmm. maybe our parents' generation, but, but those who came before them where it came from a time where, you know, there was a lot of scarcity mm -hmm. and it made a lot of sense to, to be as prepared as you possibly could be. Right. And with the crazy times that we now find ourselves living in, it feels like the, that pendulum is kind of swinging back to where people are more so on board with, hey, it's, it doesn't sound like a radical idea to have a a bunker set up of some kind or a... Or <laughs> I want a, a bunker. That would be I want amazing. A bunker or a safe room or, um, again, just having, you know, those uh, rations and making sure that you have the ability to survive and take care of yourself should you ever have to. Yeah. Well, I think 2020 was really eye-opening for a lot of people because we all have been living a very um, relatively prosperous in the American... Extremely. Yes. You know, yeah, for absolutely. Americans. And very peaceful, even though like people want to say that it hasn't been, or we've had riots and things like that. We haven't lived through World War II or World War I or um, those kind of things, and the Great Depression, mm -hmm. things like that. So we have had many, many years of peace and prosperity. And 
I think 2020 was a huge wake up call with just how not prepared all of us were. I think they say the average person has three to seven days worth of food and water in their Mm -hmm. home. That's not very much if something like this were to go down because we saw how quickly the store cleared out. They basically announced that COVID was a thing and that it was scary and we didn't really know what it was yet and are people dying and all of a sudden there were some deaths and everyone started panicking. And I remember going to the grocery store, like I should probably go get some stuff. And it had only been announced for maybe 48 hours. It was empty. It looked like something out of a movie. When I walked into our grocery store, which I'm used to our grocery store looking a certain way. And when I walked in and the shelves were empty and there would be like a box tipped over and that was it. It looked like something out of like an apop apocalyptic movie. Yeah, was and this was back scary. in Washington State. This is yeah. a, a suburb of uh, Portland, Oregon that we actually mm-hmm. lived in, Battleground, Washington. And and there have been times and circumstances here where things were pretty sparse, correct, in that same period of time. But we always comment about how since moving to Idaho, and this was at the, the peak of COVID. I mean, we moved here in April of 2020. Mm-hmm. So things had just been firing up for a couple of weeks by the time that we made it here and we were living here full time. In the time that we were here, because I think there is such a different mentality in living in a rural area, it's it it was almost like it didn't happen. Yeah, it was weird because the grocery stores were really lean back in Washington, but when we got to Idaho, everything was just stocked. There's toilet yeah. paper on the shelves. Yeah. And no one could find toilet paper in Washington. And people right. were desperate for it. I remember a lady crying in the grocery store trying to find diapers for her baby. And yeah. she was bawling because there were no diapers. And so it just the store clears out very, very quickly, and we all got to experience the reality of that. And so I think it opened a lot of like the Gen Z or the new preppers. They're like the new preppers of today, or like Since these young Gen Zers. Yeah, I think they saw it and they went, uh, "Maybe we should have extra toilet paper. Maybe we should have water purifiers. Maybe we should have two weeks of food or two months of food." And so a lot of the younger generation is now kind of the new prepper. And I think that that's good. I think it's great that they're thinking. I think so too. It's like an insurance policy, Mm -hmm. right? Nobody ever thinks that their home is going to burn down, but you want to make sure that you are protected against it should it occur. Worst case scenario type of situation. I don't think there's anything wrong with making sure that you are as prepared as you can possibly be. Yeah. To go back for a second though, with all of the the billionaires and you allude to the fact that there was a storyline within the movie about, again, just having access to people who are in the know and just the the best you can do, the most you can hope for is that you just get a heads up so Mm -hmm. that you can prepare or or bail or take off and and just do as much as you can to uh, guard your own well-being, I guess. Do you find it interesting that there seems to have been an uptick, especially in the last year? Or so, and granted, this is all after COVID with these these billionaires worldwide, but specifically mm-hmm. here in our country, you have people like uh, Mr. Zuck mm-hmm. uh, building his Hundred. his fortress, his compound down in Hawaii, my my old neck of the woods. Hundred it's, million dollar bunker he's building. Uh, yeah, I think it was like a 5,000 square foot concrete underground bunker. And that's in Hawaii where you were mm-hmm. very limited on space and they're not huge fans of, of you uh, either tampering with the land or taking up a massive I'm amount of space. Why did they let him do that? Because uh, there was another, I forgot who it was, there was another billionaire that applied for a permit to do it in New Zealand and he was turned down. We want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Manta Sleep. Originally, when we heard about Manta Sleep and a sleep mask, we thought, you know what, this might be a gimmick, something that you just try on and use for fun. But we agreed to finally do it. When we got it, put it on my face, I figured out very quickly that this thing is actually amazing. So we have two of these now because we were fighting over the first one and our absolute favorite is the Sound Plus Deep Sleep Bundle. It is 100% blackout capable. It also has a razor thin Bluetooth speakers and the cooling eye cups, which are absolutely fantastic. So the eye cups on these things soothe your eyes and your sinuses. I don't know how they manage to stay so cool. They don't put any pressure on your eyes, but what they do manage to do is lull you into this deep state of relaxation. And the speakers last a really long time, about 20 hours actually. So it's perfect for overnight or really long trips. And the cups that come with it are a lightweight C-shape. So it is perfect for side sleepers like myself. Manta Sleep offers a variety of options, including the cool eye cups, the steam eye cups, which are perfect if you have a cold or a headache, a silk sleep mask, and a weighted sleep mask, just to name a few. To check out Manta Sleep for yourself, go ahead and click on the link down below in our description. You can get 10% off your order when you use code GSL at checkout. We want to thank Manta Sleep for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Let's get back to our conversation. Because mm. they said that he couldn't like dig into their infrastructure, basically into the ground. I'm sure it's very stuff. contentious. I guarantee it. But what do you do if you're the state of Hawaii or the or the county of Kauai in that case? I mean, how do you turn how down do you, his permit? Uh, 
so what if he goes ahead and just does it anyway? I mean, he's he's one of the wealthiest men in the world, and if he's going to take it upon himself to just shrug and do it anyway, what do you do? How do you combat that? I don't know. New Zealand turned him down, or turned them down. So I mean, I'm sure Hawaii could. I think they probably just took a payment. It's just interesting to to make note of. And then I saw another article about uh, all these guys who are purchasing these. Essentially, they're they're armored tanks. Yeah. Um, and they're they're purchasing these in droves just so they can remain mobile, and and it, they're marketed as being apocalyptic vehicles and it's it's just interesting to again just make a mental note of but it gives you this sense that is there you know hey is there something that is imminent here yeah well i was watching this one news show and it was like world nation or something like that and they were all kind of making fun of these billionaires and they were like well when you have too much money i guess what do you do but build a bunker mm. and they're like they're just trying to keep up with the joneses it's like yeah they're trying to keep up with the joneses and their bunkers if the world's elite if the richest is of the rich, if the people <laughs> the in the know, is of the, rich. <laughs> the people that are in the know are doing something, yeah, all of them are doing it. You should take note. You should pay attention. You shouldn't laugh it off like, oh, these people have so much money. Now they're yeah, it's very easy to be bunkers. dismissive of it. It really is. It's easy yeah. to go, oh, they have money. They just want toys. Well, these, this is a very specific purchase or project. Yeah. I mean, when you're putting in a 5,000 square foot underground concrete bunker and you're making sure that, uh, you know, every, all the employees who are on site, the people who are constructing this property never speak about it. Yeah. It, it, it's again, yeah. Like you've mentioned, it's something that you should be definitely taking note of. I feel yeah. like now I know that it sounds like we should be wearing our Hershey kiss hats right now, you know, like our that. Hershey kiss. Hats. Yeah. But when you've got the world economic forum saying that there is a high likelihood of some kind of catastrophic blackout event in the next two years, you should pay attention when the world's elites are all trying to preserve their lives by building these underground bunkers, you should pay attention. And it's just, it's just good common sense because it's not like they're not trying. The day that the movie came out on Netflix, China was trying to hack into Texas independent power grid. Power grid, yes, correct. So why would they want to do that? Death to America. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are they trying to do that? And it's this. It's not like this is the first time they've done it. They uh, hacked into Hawaii's water water system, system correct? Yeah. They hacked into this whole port on the West Coast. And you hear very little about yeah. it, which is also very These interesting. Are big things. Not and, to get all Alex Jonesy on everybody, but people are like, "Oh yeah, but they didn't do anything, or they didn't get in." How do you know they didn't get mm. in? How do you know? Like, just because they didn't do anything doesn't mean that they didn't get in and they don't know how to get in now because maybe they're just not ready. So that was another thing that the world, you got to listen to this speech. On, it was like this whole panel on the, the World Economic Forum. They were saying, because someone was like, well, why does China want to get into the power system? And they said, well, it would be to um, demobilize America Absolutely. in the case of, of a war. So basically sure. we couldn't meddle with what they're trying to do or... They just want to take us out without firing any shots. It, it, correct. It's an act of war without having to, yeah. to yeah, drop one bomb or fire a single bullet. Yes. We would take care of ourselves. And we have proven that with the way that American behave. I mean, look at it after like Katrina, for example. Look at the way that the people behaved. And the first two days, it was very, very calm. By day three, they were breaking windows. They were stealing everything. Look at the way that society broke down. They were nature. forming gangs so that they could go around in numbers. It would happen everywhere. It's human nature. It's human nature. Everybody's going to want to, you know, look after themselves yep. and look, look after their families. And gang up together, power in numbers. And the people that aren't prepared, like, it's not like, oh, you're not prepared. I guess you're just not going to get anything. They're going to go looking for stuff. 100%. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, I don't, I don't care who you think you are. Yeah. Desperate times yeah. will, will bring about some very mm -hmm. desperate measures. Yeah, different behavior in people that you would never even expect it from, especially people that are parents, people that have children to feed. For sure. You become desperate to do that. So if you're not prepared, you have to go out and take from others that are. And so a lot of this is very speculative, what we were talking about. And I asked you earlier why it is you think that they would maybe be hinting or dropping hints about something that is maybe upcoming. Right. I, I think that a part of it is that they want to numb everybody to the possibility of it. What do you think about that? Because, right, you, if you, they, if they you implant... They did COVID, right? I would say that they did. Yeah, I think they, they put out feelers out there so it doesn't become as such a shock. It's incrementalism, right? If I can if I can implant this this thought process or idea into the masses, the, the minds of the masses, it's it's not going to be or seem so 
uh, appalling when it actually occurs. It, it'll be something that you somewhat expect and you will be more inclined to be accepting of. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Well, and they're talking to even the leaders of, of different states, the governors and things like that, yeah. and saying like, in, in the event that this happens. Right. Well, not, not only in the event, but yeah, like here, take these preparations. You should yeah. be prepared should this occur, wink, wink, almost yeah. in, in the, the tone and intonation of their voices when they're when they're explaining it to these officials. It's crazy. Well, I do feel like that happened a little bit with, with COVID because in October, they were doing training sessions. Mm-hmm. Saying for, for the for the world's leaders on what to do in the event of a worldwide pandemic. A few months later, what usher in COVID. So, I mean, I know that sounds super conspiracy theory and everything, but the timeline is what the timeline is. And now I feel like they're doing it. They're putting out warnings. They've got this creepy movie that the Obamas are behind. And you've got, you know, the World Economic Forum putting out warnings saying that, hey, guys, high likelihood of this happening. Uh like they're not even being that secretive about it. So why is no one listening? Yeah, it does feel that way. And again, it's something that I think that everyone should should ponder or discuss at the very least. Did, did you catch any of the symbolism that's in the movie? No, you were saying that there was some weird symbolism in the movie, but I didn't catch it because I think I was just so weirded out while watching the movie. Let me wipe the sweat from my forehead and pull some Do of this up because it's something that's just really, really interesting. All right, so I just showed Melissa this video for the sake of uh, our podcast episode. I'm actually going to edit that out because I'm not a huge fan of the video. However, he does do a good job of pointing out a lot of the symbolism that is included in the movie. Uh, the reason I don't want to include it, honestly, is because the guy is is clearly extremely biased and very dismissive of yeah, the symbolism. He's, he's pretty dismissive. Of it. I mean, I know it is something that a lot of movie makers do is they do add like symbolism and they are trying to get people's attention and they want people to dissect their films and watch them really yeah, and I get it, and it works. And uh, yeah. in this case, though, I just find it odd, especially when, again, you you have you have a former U.S. president behind this movie. It's one thing to add little Easter eggs. Heck, we've even done it in a lot of our videos, just mm -hmm. just for something fun. And I know a lot of YouTubers actually do that. But in this particular case, when you are a former U.S. president and you do things like include uh, digital numbers that that show the the two words together, or, or it says die. 666. Mm -hmm. Again, this sounds like a very, um, you know, kind of tongue in cheek thing, conspiratorial thing to discuss. But again, I just find it so odd that they would go out of their way to do things like that. There's another scene, the opening scene, in fact, where the clock is set to a six. There's a Philadelphia 76ers coffee mug right next to that clock. And then on the opposite end of the bed, you have another six. So it's 666 showing. So is that just once fun again. stuff that like the person who designs like maybe so. I feel like, I mean, I feel like to be fair, I doubt Barack was like there while they were setting up the room and was like, I want this symbolism. Like, I don't think that he was that involved. With I'm the not movie. saying I that he it was, was there. More of a financial investment. Actually, there are reports that he was heavily involved. He was there on set. He was giving uh, direction to the director oh, when it came okay. to things. Well, then maybe, so, he, well, okay, then maybe he set the clock. I don't know. I didn't realize he was like on set. Regardless, your name is on the film. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just seems like such a weird thing. And, and Well, a lot of times people will throw their name on film, throw their money behind a film just to like... Uh, make it an investment type thing or they just this is all just me relaying what i've heard from others but apparently he was he was literally on set and had hmm. a uh heavy part of the uh movie making process interesting he was, yeah he was well, very involved i mean it's a movie and it is what it is but the timing for me was weird with the cyber attack from china being that it was the same day and everything like that and that apparently in the last that this in the last year, there have been a lot of these cyber attacks coming from China. There's been like 24 that they've actually hacked into um, major, whether it's power system, water systems. Um, yeah, again, infrastructure. Ports, infrastructure, things yeah. that could shut down. So they're dabbling, but they haven't done anything yet. And it's like, don't tell me that they haven't successfully gotten into some of these. They didn't, when they tried to get into Texas, whether or not they successfully figured it out, they didn't do anything because there's no need to do anything yet, but they want to know how. As an adversary of our country, do you think that we are making similar efforts to try to infiltrate their systems and, and bring them down? I don't know what, what their level Probably. of vulnerability is when compared to ours, but do you think that, uh, you think that's happening? I think that all of the countries are probably doing it because there's we live in such a digital age that there's so much control in that. If you can take down, like explained in the movie, that it's this three-step process. You take down the grid and then you take away all of their information and communication. 
And then step three is they just destroy themselves within. And you don't have to do anything. It's true. And I think it's very plain to see that that would be the case. That, so. I think that would 100% be the case throughout Europe, um, Asia, here in the U.S., or all of North America. I mean, you can count Mexico and Canada in that, too. So needless to say, we've been discussing for a long time about, uh, you know, building a uh, off-grid power setup for ourselves as an alternative mean of power. We already have the the well water. Um, we mm-hmm. actually have a hand pump here on our property. And it's not to say that I am I am preparing for any particular situation. I just yeah. don't think it's a bad idea to be as prepared as possible. And it definitely should grab your attention when you have the powers that be, the, the puppet masters who are sort of eluding in a very roundabout way. That I don't hey, even think they're eluding. I mean, we literally have evidence of other countries doing oh it. Oh yeah, no, it's, trying, it's, it's happening. Yeah, they, they're actively and making efforts. And, and I mean, you'd think that eventually there's going to come a time they just have to get it right once, right? It's it, You can try a thousand times and as soon as you are successful, we're all screwed. I think... It, I don't, I don't know that that's necessarily true. I don't think that they're just going to jump on it the first chance they get. I think they want to know how to get into everything. Oh, I think, so you think they're going to sit on it? So I think they've been sitting on it. I think all of these attempts in the past year is because they're figuring out Hawaii's water system, Texas power grid, the West Coast. So it all happens in unison? Chain. So that, it all happens at once. Yeah, absolutely. Because what's the point of taking down Texas? What good is that going to do? Uh, I mean, if you're familiar with the power grid here in our country, you've got the basically the East Coast, West Coast, and and Texas being the standalone power grid. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I don't know why Texas is particular, but why why Hawaii? Why Hawaii and the water system there? Because they're isolated. Think they of- are very isolated. If there's any place that would be easy to bring down, it'd be Hawaii. Yeah. And I mean, you could go back to the Lahaina fires. And again, not to have an extremely like conspiratorial, um, <laughs> speculative, extremely speculative conversation, but there were people who were attributing the the fire in Lahaina that happened uh, late last year to China and uh, the lasers. You, you can go back to the China spy balloons. I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff that's happening. There's I don't, been a lot of weird stuff. I don't know whether or not that's something that's always been, you know, been been occurring and we just weren't very familiar with it. And now we have access to, to far mm-hmm. more information than we used to. But it just seems like things seem, I, I just think it's the natural flow of things. I think you're going to see more and more of this over time until eventually something cataclysmic is going to occur. Right. Well, I think back during the Cold War and everything like that, Everybody assumed that, oh my gosh, if there's a World War III, it's going to be this nuclear event and it's going to be over in seconds and it's just going to bring down the entire globe. Yeah. And they were doing those shelter in place drills. And mm-hmm. I mean, you had US presidents saying that the drills were just absolutely ridiculous. So, you know, you, you get people on TV saying, like, oh no, this is great. I mean, they literally had propaganda films put out. When families were sitting down watching the news and eating their TV dinners, right. they had these propaganda films out saying that if you see a flash in the sky, lay flat on the ground and, and cover yourself with your cardigan. <laughs> That'll save you. Even a newspaper can help. And they show men laying there on the floor or whatever in New York City, putting their newspaper over their head. I mean, if you're about to die, you might as well be well informed, right? It was, they literally were like, even on, like a newspaper. We had st- little kids hiding under their desks doing drills for nuclear bombs when the leaders were building bunkers. They knew damn well that all of that propaganda was just to make everybody feel better. Like the U.S. president said that there wouldn't be enough bulldozers to scrape the bodies from the streets if nuclear bombs you know, go off. So it, unrelated. At that, but at that point in time. It's a very fun little morbid uh, thought that you just jogged from my memory here. And, and take it with a grain of salt because it's actually coming from comedian Matt Reif. But he 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 was playing into the theory. <laughs> oh, no, him. He was playing into the theory that the reason that y- these airlines uh, have you basically tuck your head between your knees and, and, and hold and cover in the event of uh, 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 an emergency landing is because <laughs> should you crash and wreck, it's it's the the quickest means of ensuring that you you die <laughs> as, as, as quickly and as efficiently so as possible. don't tuck your head between your knees. I'm not saying that. It's just it's funny you mentioning all you know rattling off all the old drills that they used to do. It just made me think of that. So well, they were it's, just so ridiculous. It you is. Know? It's it's absurd. And the same thing goes for, for a plane crash, right? It's just to make. The masses that are about to perish feel better. Right. Like, oh, there's something you can do. Here's what we got for you. As they sneak down into Raven Rock. So it's just crazy. You want to touch upon Raven Rock? Oh, How crazy do we want to go here? <laughs> no, there, Raven Rock is not cons- 
it's, it's not it's a not. conspiracy. It's that not. is a, a thing. That is real. Like it's I said, it's like Area 51, though. Uh, it's pretty private. A lot of what we have said is speculative, but but the things that Melissa is mentioning, these are these are documented incidents yeah, of no. things that are 100 percent occurring. Not to go down rabbit holes yeah. and not come across to Alex Jonesy once again. Yeah, but, no, the cyber attacks and everything. You can just look those up yeah. if you want to know what the world. Uh, Economic forum. E economic forum said as far as like two years and likelihood and everything, it's there. It, look it up. And Watch this it. is just the stuff that we can confirm. What mm -hmm. what's actually occurring that we we, that we don't know about behind closed yeah. doors at Raven Rock. I'm just saying. So Raven Rock, uh, the whole idea for that started seventy years ago when they started designing, and it is this massive bunker for the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. It's essentially the White House and the Pentagon underground. I mean, seven hundred and eighty feet underground it's a safe house for the u.s federal government mm -hmm. yeah it can house up to like three thousand people so you when you enter this is coming from somebody who worked in the white house wing of raven rock for three and a half years and when you enter you go through this three foot door and then you walk like a quarter of a mile or something like this down this hallway and you go deeper and deeper down into this mountain it's like almost 800 feet underground yeah which to me is a nightmare <laughs> Very Highly claustrophobic. Very claustrophobic. I Maybe hate no the bunker idea for that. the Sousa family. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So, and then you start coming across doors, and each door leads to basically uh, what would be a part of the Pentagon. So it's three stories high, each one, and it has like 60 offices. And then there's a central cafeteria that could feed up to 3,000 people for 30 days. But he was saying it's highly unlikely that 3,000 people are going to get down there. So would, you'd probably be able to survive down there for longer. There's a presidential suite with its own kitchen. It leads to the situation room. All right. So I'm not saying that we're crazy. Okay. <laughs> Please don't think that foil? we're crazy. I just got to. <laughs> we enjoy discussing these types of things. And I think it's worth discussing. Yeah. In a lot of, uh, in a lot of cases, it is, right? It's, it's nice to play out these hypotheticals. It's not nice. I just think it's important. It's yeah, I don't think that, that it's nice to play them out, but it sure does make some interesting dinner talk. It's something that I would encourage all of uh, everyone to, to at least ponder and consider. And if you feel as though you need to uh, take action in preparing to, uh, as much as you possibly can, Again, I would encourage you to do so. There yeah. are things that we have done. I'm not going to go into specifics about what we've done, but there are many things that we've done to try to uh, hedge against any kind of a horrible, tragic, cataclysmic, apocalyptic type situation. Yeah, I think the problem with like a grid down situation is that nobody could really be prepared for something like that. And you can't really be prepared for human behavior in an event like that. You can only do so much, right? You can only do what you can do. Yeah, so I was listening to this whole timeline thing. There's like a very distinct timeline that's... That, Different organizations have studied human behavior through different natural disasters or um, pandemics, wars, all just through time. There is a very distinct timeline of human behavior. So like in the first 24 hours, you need to decide, are we going to bug out or are we going to bug in? You mm -hmm. need to decide in 24 hours. Yep. If you're going, if you, you only have three days worth of food, you need to go shopping right now. Like you need to go now, but only go if you have to go because everybody's going to be going and you're going to be fighting the crowds. However, in the first 24 hours, those crowds may not be hostile yet, but those shelves are going to clear out really, really quickly. And then by like 48 hours, people are starting to get nervous. Everyone's cell phones are dead. Like that's when things start to, to die. Deteriorate. The electric cars aren't charged anymore. The cell phones aren't charged and people are starting to get nervous. By day three, that's when unrest starts. So that's when people start looting the stores. You're going to start to see broken windows. You're going to start to see people stealing. It won't just be stores. It'll be homes. It'll be homes too eventually. But day three is usually just like retail and stuff like that. And then the other thing is most Americans or most people don't have cash out. You have to have some cash. It doesn't even need to be a lot. But get some cash out because... If we do have a blackout, even if it only lasts for four days, let's say you don't have any food in your house, you can't go to the store and they can't process your credit card. Yep. The bank can't process, you can't go to an ATM, you have to have cash. The problem with cash is within seven days, people start to realize that cash doesn't matter worthless. anymore. It is worthless. So if you have cash, spend it in the first seven days. Precious metals, gold, silver. That becomes better currency. And I think silver is a better currency than gold because... Gold is too valuable. It's so expensive. I mean, what is it an ounce right now? Around two thousand dollars or something like that. I'd have to check, but yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. So if you just have a bunch of gold coins and you need a gallon of gasoline, you're going to be like, crap. Like, 
a two thousand dollar. You know what I mean? And then all the lights come back on the next day. You're gonna be real mad about that ounce of gold. So when it comes to preps and taking the necessary precautions, you are crazy until you aren't crazy you're any longer. crazy until you're brilliant exactly and i do think that there is this really skewed view of what people are that think about this kind of stuff and research this kind of stuff because it used to be the fringe mm -hmm. but now it's becoming more and more popular and if you walk into someone's garage and they have a 30-day food supply you're like oh got that at Costco and I, you know, like Costco selling stuff like that. And yeah. I think it's great. And I think when you're there, you should grab a couple pails. Yes. <laughs> it's just a good idea because there's another, I happen to think that if a situation like that were to occur, it would come from another country trying to do um, either distract America or just take them out of the running so mm -hmm. that they can do whatever deeds they want to do without us interfering because we do tend to meddle. Yeah. So I think that would be the most likely scenario. But there is another theory going around that if if you want to believe the whole globalist, elitist uh, pro, you know, plan, there is another theory that they would knock everything out, knock the internet out for just like four or five days, mm -hmm. really freak everyone out, and then say, okay, we can get it back online, but that was a cyber attack. So now in order to protect everyone... Right. We now are going to have full control. We're going to monitor everything. We're going to babysit everything you do online to protect you. So it happens every time, right? It's 9-11, Patriot, Patriot, Act. Patriot Act. You've of, got uh, COVID yeah. and a lot of things that came out of that. The government mm -hmm. never wants to uh, place restrictions upon themselves. They want more and more power. They want more and more authority. They want more and more access to, to you, your activities. They want more control, period. Well, so. With the digital age that we live in right now, our entire lives are online, everything we mm -hmm. do. And if they have full access to that and they have an excuse, we can monitor every single thing you do openly, like in the Patriot Act, they can surveil or they can do surveillance on American citizens that they weren't able to do before in yep. the name of protection yeah. and safety and security. If they can do the same thing with the internet. So there's two, con there's two things. So I tend to lean more towards, it would probably be an outside attack, but this is a theory I heard a lot, of, a lot of theories out there. A lot of theories out there, but a lot of people just paying attention because of the chatter going around, because uh, because of the actions of China over the past year in our country, there has been, a, they said like 24 successful hack-ins, mm -hmm. which, hack but yet, yeah, hack-ins, <laughs> hack hack but yet they <laughs> didn't do anything. And yeah. so like, to me, that just seems like they're just getting their ducks in a row. It's concerning. Who, kn who knows? Either way, it's not good. Yeah. Because I don't know how we're going to do our podcast if the internet goes. <laughs> I have no idea. But no, I think that's that's really wise advice coming from you. You're so smart, Mama. You're so smart. I just think, I think you have to keep a cool head about it. But I think you need to realize that it's a possibility with the digital age that we live in. Like I said, it's an insurance policy, right? I think you should be as prepared as you possibly can be. So whether that means you brush up on your your skills um, and your ability to, you know, grow your own food, to to hunt, um, to to barter successfully, whether you build a community around, where, you know, in the area that where, that you live in to where... Yeah. There are people that you trust and and you know can be uh, relied upon in a in a really crappy dire situation. All all good things to discuss ahead of time because when when push comes to shove, that's that's not going to be the time to be trying to sort through things, trying to no. figure things out, trying to coordinate with neighbors. So yeah, once something happens, whether it's I mean there there's been really scary pandemics through history. history I mean yes. we've had the Spanish flu, we've yep. had the Black Plague. These are really really scary. COVID was nothing compared to those. Mm -hmm. And if something like that were to come up again, or, you know, that would, that could be really scary. And so there's different things to be prepared for and different things that you should just have. I mean, food, water, shelter are basic protection. You got to have protection. But the other thing is, I think a lot of people that are prepper minded are all about like me and mine and everybody else buzz off. Mm -hmm. And really the smart thing to do is talk with your neighbors and your community and your friends and see what plans they have in place because a prepared community is a safe community. And if you can all work together, you're better off. Because if you're like the one person that's got food and the rest of your community is like not prepared, you're a target. They're knocking on your door. Yep. So yeah, it's better to talk to your neighbors and make sure that you guys have security measures in place and food in place and you know, you know how to garden and you have a well pump and you have a water filtration and you have, you know, and help each other. It's going to go a lot further than hiding away in a bunker and thinking that you're going to eat. 
There's uh, nothing wrong with that. That doesn't make you crazy. Again, we are not crazy people. We don't um, even have a bunker. You make it sound like we are. <laughs> no, but you know what? Hey, I'm not, uh, I'm not <laughs> you, against it. Next at the same build. time. It, yeah. Good, simple living bunker build. <laughs> You're, you're laughing. It. I'm not. I'm not laughing. That would be really expensive. It would be extremely expensive. But I think it's. Um. You know, if you have the means to make it happen for yourself, it's not. It's not a horrible idea. Look, if I was a billionaire or a hundred millionaire or whatever, <laughs> I would a hundred percent be doing a million dollar bunker yeah, underground. I'm not saying it has to be. You know what what Zuckerberg's putting in by any means, but uh, it, I, it's uh, taking every possible precaution that you can ahead of time. I yeah. think is is something that. Again, I think everybody should take into consideration at the very least. Yeah, I think it's a good, the start of the year is a really good time. So 2012 yeah. was when I started to become really aware of stuff and starting like every single year at New Year's, we would get a tax return. We don't get a tax return anymore, but we used to get a tax return and mm -hmm. I would take that tax return and I would roll it into some kind of a preparation, something mm -hmm. for our family. And that was just what we did with our tax return. And sometimes it was like survival vault garden seed that has all since expired. Um, I should probably get that updated. Um, it would probably still grow, but you know what I mean? Um, one year it was just a really expensive water filter. And I mean, we bought that thing like 10 years ago. We've never even taken it out of the package, but I like that we have it. I like that it's there, that you could go to a river and clean water. I don't know. So there's just things, but there's there's little things that you have to think about with like aging parents and stuff like that. Medication is a huge one. If you're a diabetic. Medication's overlooked, yes. Yeah, it's very overlooked. And so are things like portable power stations. Because if you're somebody that relies on a dialysis machine or oxygen mm -hmm. or a CPAP machine or anything like that. It's potentially life-saving. Yeah. Just the grid going down. Like if literally if it was by design and it only went down for four or five days to freak everyone out. People could die. Yeah. I mean, in Texas, when they had that polar vortex, mm -hmm. people died because their power grid was not used to these freezing temperatures and it literally could not keep up with the demand of everyone cranking their heat in Texas and their system went down and it only went down for like four minutes. Yeah. But I mean, it was almost catastrophic. It doesn't take much. No. Our, our society is very, very fragile and mm -hmm. susceptible. And I think, you know, it's easy to forget that when things are up and running 99.9% right. of the We feel time. so invincible. We have everything and everything's right now. We do. There's a very thin veil between living very comfortably mm -hmm. and absolute chaos. And if none of this, that wouldn't even have been a threat a hundred years ago. If... There, if there was like, oh no, that any kind of electricity at all just is gone a hundred yeah. years ago, maybe even 75 years ago, I think people would have just dealt with it mm -hmm. and been fine yeah. because there was more grit. And then people, knew, they had skills back then Correct. and they didn't rely on these mm -hmm. for everything. It's we don't even us. think anymore. We're like, oh, what was that actor from the do, do, do? <laughs> and it literally takes away critical thinking in your brain. We're no longer using the muscles in our brain to think back and remember who that freaking actor was, <laughs> you know? We used to have to do that. It was Julia Roberts and she was in the movie. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Like it would bug you all day and then you'd remember and be like, ah. Yeah, no, complacency is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. So I don't know. Fun discussion. Yeah. Regardless, well, either way. I mean, I'm glad everybody will come away from this thinking that we're absolutely nuts now. I, I don't know. I don't think so. I think people, <laughs> I think 2020 remind, like I think it showed people how quickly Stores get emptied and why it's not a horrible idea to grab an extra pack of toilet paper when you're grocery shopping. Just grab something extra every time you go grocery shopping. Yeah, simple as that. Like simple Kevin Bacon's that. character in, in mm -hmm. the movie. Yeah. yeah. Amen. All right. Good talk. Anything else from you? <laughs> I don't think so. All right. But for anyone that hasn't seen the movie, go watch it and freak yourself out. Yeah. I mean, it's a decent enough movie. Honestly, there's good. there are some undertones to it and like yeah, everything nowadays, a especially. A racist remarks in there. <laughs> Um, yeah, there are a lot of political undertones to it, but all in all, I mean, I thought it was a decent movie. It, it gave the viewer, um, provided you were, you were very like-minded to us. It gave you something to think about and something to discuss, like I said. So that's why we're in here Horrible doing this. Horrible ending. I think, um, I, I, again, I want to, I want to hammer home. I think Melissa has given out a, a lot of really good advice and this is something obviously that we've spent a lot of time thinking about, but if you are not prepared, it's not too late to do so. Do it while you can. And, uh, you know, even for us, there, there are still many things in many areas where we have to shore up and make sure that we are uh, doing what. Like I just said, all that we can while we can. So I think it'd be fun to get like a, a really educated survival. Because I mean, I, I don't know that much about survivalism yeah. and what you need to have yeah. and everything like that. So I think it'd be really interesting to get someone that really knew their stuff 
to come on and tell people like, this is what you should have bare minimum. These are the things you need to think about. That would be a really interesting guest. Agreed. All right. I uh, appreciate you guys being here. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We really appreciate it. And we will see you guys next week with a brand new episode here on New World Old Soul. I'm still getting used to the name, but we uh, <laughs> appreciate it. New uh, Good Simple Living video will be out on Saturday. Yep. All right, guys, we'll take care and uh, you take care. We'll see you later.